Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to sequences. Now a sequence is a set of terms which follow a particular rule or pattern. And the terms in the sequence are often called U1 for the first term, U2 for the second term, and so on. And the nth term is UN. And in these three sequences that I've got here, there's a pattern then going between each of the terms. You most probably can see what that pattern is, but I'll just give you a moment to put down what you think each of these terms are, the fifth term then in each sequence, and to write down what you think the rule is for each of them. So I'll just give you a moment uh, to do this. If you'd like, just pause the video. When you come back, we'll run through that. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So what's the rule for the first sequence? Well, each of the terms go up in steps of four. So that's our rule. We'll put that in here, that it goes up in steps of four. So if that's the case, the next term will be 15 add four, which is clearly going to be 19. Now for this second sequence, the numbers that we've got here are called square numbers. This is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared and 4 squared. So the fifth term in the sequence must be 5 squared, which is 25. So the second rule here is that we're dealing with square numbers. Now in this third sequence of fractions, what's happening? Well, did you notice that the numbers in the top, the numerator, are going up in steps of 1? And so the top number here is going to be 5. And the number in the denominator is always 1 more than the number in the numerator. So it's going to be 5 sixths. So that rule then was that the fractions where the numerator is the same as the term and the denominator is one more than the term. So for instance, the fifth term here, the numerator was five and the denominator was one more than that term. So it was six. Now what I want to show you next is we need a formula that would give us the nth term in general. I mean, if I wanted to find, say, for instance, the hundredth term in any of these sequences, I don't want to have to write them all out until I get to the hundredth term. I want to come up with a formula that works out the nth term. Now, the nth term for this first sequence, because it goes up in steps of four, it's going to be based around four times n. And notice that if n is 1 for the first term here, then if n is 1, would have 4 times 1, which is 4, but 3 is 1 less. So it's 4n minus 1. It works for every term. Look, when n is 2 for the second term here, 4 times 2 is 8. Take away 1 is 7. It works for the fifth term. So 4 times 5 is 20, take away 1, 19. So this is a simple rule that would tell us, for instance, that the hundredth term, u100, would be 4 times 100, 400, take away 1, gives us 399. So what do you think the rule for this one would be for un, the nth term? Well, it's going to be n squared. It's a nice simple one, that one. If we're looking, for instance, at the third term, u3, n would be 3, and we'd have 3 squared, which is the 9. And what do you think the nth term formula would be for this one here? Well, for this one, each of the numbers in the top of the fraction, the numerator, correspond to the term number. So in other words, 
if I'm on, say, the third term, we've got a 3 there. So if I'm on the nth term, I would expect it to be n on the top. And in the denominator, you'll notice the number then is 1 more than the number on the top. So therefore, this has got to be n plus 1. So if I was looking for the hundredth term in this particular sequence, I know it would be 100 over 100 plus 1, 101. So it's handy having a formula then for the nth term of a sequence. Now, I've got a question here that you might like to try. We've got to find the first three terms and the seventh term of the sequence where the nth term, un, is equal to minus 1 all to the power n multiplied by n all divided by n plus 3. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video, have a go at this one, see if you can then write down the first three terms and the seventh term of the sequence given by this formula. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for the first term in the sequence, u1, all I've got to do is set n equal to 1. And so therefore we're going to have minus 1 to the power 1 multiplied by the fraction 1 over 1 plus 3. I'll show the working, even though it's fairly straightforward, just so that you can see the steps that I've done. And so minus 1 to the power 1 is negative 1, and we end up with the fraction minus 1 quarter. So that's our first term. Let's just section that off there, OK? And for the second term, u2, well, this is when n equals 2. So you're going to have minus 1 squared multiplied by the fraction 2 over 2 plus 3, 2 fifths in other words. OK, I won't show as many steps in that bit. And what we've got here is minus 1 when you square it is positive 1. And positive 1 times 2 fifths just gives us 2 fifths. So that's the second term. Moving on now to the third term, u3. OK, that's when n equals 3. What we're going to have this time is minus 1 all cubed, multiplied by the fraction 3 over 3 plus 3, so 3 sixths. In other words, a half here. Minus 1 cubed, though, is negative 1, so we get minus a half. What we've got here is a sequence which will oscillate. We're going from a negative to a positive to a negative. The next term, u4, will be a positive term, so we've got an oscillating sequence. So what would the seventh term be? OK, so we'll just do that one. So for the seventh term, u7, well, that's when n equals 7. We're going to have minus 1 then, all to the power 7, multiplied by the fraction 7 over 10, 7 tenths. And minus 1 to an odd power is going to be minus 1. So you're going to have minus 1 times 7 tenths, which is just going to be minus 7 tenths. OK, well, that brings us now to the end of this video, where hopefully you've understood what we mean by a sequence and the notation that we've used. And also how we can use the formula for the nth term, un, of the sequence to establish other terms in the sequence.